Have you been hearing a lot of chatter about the almighty AI chat GPT coming to steal your Salesforce jobs? Well, me being who I am, I definitely had to check this out. So what chat GPT is, is an AI chat bot that you ask it questions and it will spit back out answers for you. Sounds simple enough, sounds like Google, but what the really cool thing is that it's conversational and it remembers some of the context of what you're talking about. So already pretty cool there. And then on top of that, it can write code. In this video, I'm gonna check out what ChatGPT can do in the Salesforce context and beyond. I also brought a special guest who's never used ChatGPT before to be a sounding board. Another person to pitch ideas should be fun. Let's get to Doing. it. Write an integration to the, uh, what is that, Scryfall? Okay, so let me explain this one. So somebody told me, Warren told me, it I, can write integrations. True. If, uh, I, I picked a very obscure, like, API that's out there on the internet that picks up Magic the Gathering trading cards. It has data on all the cards that are in that game. And uh, I'm wondering if you, it will write an integration. Oh, wait, we should specify that it's Apex, though, if you're if focused on Salesforce. It might spit something out with Python, which is like three lines long. There you go. Yeah, write a Salesforce Apex integration to the Scryfall API, which, is, again, is just a random API I picked that imports a given Magic the Gathering trading card, which is just a trading card data for a given card name search term. That did not take long. Yeah, I think it's going to, I've heard it kills this. Somebody told me at work it, it kills this. Oh my God, it's literally going to do it, isn't it? So I've done this for a project of mine in Python. So I know what this API looks like. Oh my God, it's doing it. Search card by name. That's not even a bad method name. Yeah, yeah string search url that's the that's the that's the url and it has used the static or used to it doesn't need any constant. like keys or anything to like a uh, author it an api key no it's just open that's okay. why I, well i mean but this is an easy one right it's a good example to to, to pick from right Dude, it's um, error handling holy crap you, you had this, this right is, way too much look, look at this thing I was it's working seconds. overdrive. It's, it's doing the stretch goals by itself. <laughs> this I might actually. And it has a card my... custom no, object. It's literally doing it. It read my mind. <laughs> the stretch goal for this one was to make an S object that defines the card. It's literally doing it. Now, are those the correct? Um, yes. Oh, my gosh. The values. The, the keys. Ah. Um. So it looks like it. I've seen this before. Um, oh, did it just like stop? Yeah, it just like stops. So let's see if this continues. There you go. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, it's literally <laughs> doing it. Now, now this is the, this is more of the, in the same class. It's another method. It's still in the same class. Okay, this is something that I was wondering about because I did see that it did the request. It even but referenced learning bowl. No way. Uh -huh. oh, please scroll up. This is All ridiculous. Right. This is ridiculous. You have no idea how ridiculous this is. This just okay. possibly like. How much work did this do for you right now? <laughs> so this took me when I did this in Python, this took me a whole day. But that, that's because I'm not super quick with Python, but it did take me a whole day to think about it and like, you know, figure out how I wanted to do it. Like instead of an S object, to have a class it imports into, but like let's scroll to the very top. There we are. So, okay. So it, it makes a, okay. So it's not inside of a class, right? But like you could put this in a class and it, it's got the uh, constant there, which isn't denoted as a constant, but mm -hmm. you could easily do that. Like if you're doing like a prototype first development mindset, this works. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Search card by name. What a beautiful method name. Uh, that's the actual URL. I can tell you that that's true. It uses the encoding util to encode the URL because it knows you have to do that. Sends the HTTP request and gets the response, which all you have to do to call this API endpoint is just send the request to the mm -hmm. search URL using that method. So well, that's what it wrote down there at the beginning after we asked to continue. Holy crap. And then it checks the, okay, so it's doing error checking. Failed to search for card. 
Holy crap. That's a, that's a, that's a good error message right there. Great error message. I've seen worse. <laughs> uh, parse the JSON, so it builds a JSON. It knows that it's going to return you a JSON. It does. Check if there were any matching cards. Okay, so it can give you a JSON back that's empty, theoretically speaking. Uh, it checks the JSON to see if it has a card with that. Damn, it even it knows to just grab the first item in the array for the best result. Import card data. Okay, we'll look at that in a second. And Oops, then sorry. otherwise, it does a system debug and says, I, right. I couldn't do it. So let's yeah, look at the import card Even data. like the debug, it's like it knows kind of what's going. It knows what you're looking for, right? There's no match in the cards that yeah. you're searching for. So then it gets the cards ID. It has an ID in their database, just like a Salesforce ID. Card details URL. Okay. Oh, so this is even smarter than that. It 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 you it knows to save data by going and searching to see if the card exists, grabs its ID, and then queries the database using the ID. This is great. <laughs> and then it goes and does another HTTP request, and it says if I could get details about that card with that ID, and then it creates a new card record, which I didn't even tell it to do. That's the stretch goal that I was going to tell it to do, is to make a record in the database and update it. But you could easily finish that right there. Yeah. And yeah. and look, here's the original send request method. You this is this is a great prototype code. Hmm. You throw this in a class, and then look, it even tells you what you can put in your system debug. Search hmm. card by name lightning bolt, and that will give you a result. Hmm. I guarantee you that code runs. You throw in a class, the code runs. Hmm. Well. Wow. I'm it's bad, it's stylistically bad, but like it works. I like this. And, and you could clean that up as a human being into something that has like structure and better method names and properly uses camel uh, uh, upper camel case to denote your constants. I was not yeah. expecting all of this. I'm not going to lie. You didn't think it could do that? I, I didn't think it could do it that well. I didn't think it could do this that well. I heard that it could do like APIs, especially ones that were kind of open or more available. So I you heard. Me, when we were writing these questions, you said... Uh, I no. didn't know it was going to like, so when it's making all this stuff and an object, like it's one, it's remembering all this stuff is in Salesforce and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, it's going ahead and making the object for you and other it's languages. Dude, I don't know. If, do they always go that far? Like th this is, this is very fun. This is very fun. So hold on. Did you, what was the actual, cause my actual question was. Right. Salesforce APIs integration import oh. and given magic, the gathering, uh, trading cards data for a given card name search. search. So my stretch goals were design an S object to store the data from a found card and update mm -hmm. or insert the card depending on if the search card is found. It already did that without yeah. asking. Yeah. Without asking, by the way. I mean, it didn't finish it, but it could. You could finish that. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to ask it was write a test class to cover the integration, success, and failure. If it could do this. We, you've got to put this, you've got to show the viewers this. This is ridiculous. Oh, this is ridiculous. Here comes a mox. No, it's called something good. <laughs> well, let's see what it does for, I mean, so if it's already calling the mock class, it's probably going to create the mock class Bro, for it. it. it it's literally <laughs> doing it right now. It is doing it right now. Very interesting. Dude, look, that's a legitimate TCG player. Oh my God, it's got all the data. Yeah. You have no idea how ridiculous this is. This is such a specific thing, too. This is an extremely specific thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we could probably hit this with a little bit more it, continues like this. It doesn't matter. It's, yeah, it, it, it's done it, dude. Like it's if it, I mean, I can tell that this is a totally acceptable class. Like even if if I wanted to nitpick at this, I could. But yeah, would, a, would I as a human being be proud if I wrote this in the time that it wrote this? Oh, yeah. oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Like, what, like, what did that take? I like, a whole five... Well, I mean, for it to create it, it took less than five minutes, but it's crazy. You're still, Here's the thing, though. You're still not thinking big picture with this. It's thinking small picture. It's thinking prototypes. It, it, it's very specific. You, you know, you got to give it, do, like, a chunk of work. You can't just yeah. say, all right, I need to integrate this, 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 and this. I mean, maybe it can, and that's part two. We we ask it some crazy question like that, but in terms of just like giving a specific task to get done and seeing it get made, it's kind of working. This is solid. It did it, dude. It 
did it. It didn't just do it. It, it nailed it. I would say like you can nitpick, but the, the thing it can't do is architecture. It cannot do architecture. If you're, if you, you're still going to have a job because there's no way that this AI is for a long time going to be able to resolve architectural challenges. Like, let's say we have a couple different things that we're calling from this, uh, resource, this other database. If we have a couple different things, we want to write like some interfaces or something or some sort of abstractions to like, especially with authentication and stuff and security, mm -hmm. you, you need a human to do that. I think yeah. I, I didn't give it a thing that you need to authenticate to, because I think that that would be like, here are the keys to authenticate yourself. Can you do it? Like we could definitely <laughs> test that. And I feel like it might be able to do it, dude. All I right. feel like it might be able to do it. It's going to know. Scared. All right, let's do, let's hit up on oh. uh, the last question here. Um, so just to, just to push it even further, we're going to ask it to write an LWC and we're just saying LWC. And what this is supposed to do is take some, it's, it's basically those calculators where you can put in your exam score and see what it spits out. So like, you know, you have your exam, you put in one, two, like you got a 10 in this section, a 50 in this section, whatever. And it spits back, oh, you got a 75%, you passed the exam. Um, so we are seeing it right that <laughs> right what now. So how does it know? Oh, I mean, I guess it, <laughs> this is the thing that I want to point out. And I think you're getting there, right? How does it know that these are the sections for PD one? They're in right? order. They're in order. I mean, it's, it's reading the sections and it's, and it's pulling them down and I just think that's wild. I just think that's no, wild. Look at this too. It knows the minimum and maximum percentages and knows where to put them in the lightning input. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? That's above and beyond. So let's just let's stress this out a little bit more. See if the continue spits back it's out some stuff. It's got to have like a JavaScript. That's what. I've never seen it write JavaScript yet. Let's see. And I'm assuming it has a ton of JS it examples to go off on, right? It should kick ass at JavaScript. There's, there's got to be people in here asking JavaScript stuff to it all day because everything runs on JavaScript. Yeah. So it would have a huge code base to, or data set of JS to, to run off of. And you know, for, for JS, like it's not going to be specific for Salesforce, but the, it's kind of the same thing, right? Like it's LWC, it's JS. Are these too many categories, though? It, there are too many categories. No, are. that's way too many. I think there's only okay. a couple. Handle input change. Okay, uses. Oh, that's not. I mean, that works, right? That update the score for the input field, but that's not how I would write that. You would just refer to it by the event. Yeah, you, you have the event there. You just grab the event. Let's find out. Or, I mean, does the front end uh, reference the the method for on change? Yeah. Handle input change? It yeah, does. They're there. So, yeah. What, what are they? I mean, that works, right? Yeah. Scroll back. Are the, this... are the weights accurate, though? Because even... Oh, I don't know. Even though... So, I think this is where it mixes it mixes itself up. Because this, this should technically be like 0 to 100. And then you need to do a multiplication times whatever your score is times the oh, weight. I see. Um, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky for it. And it didn't, maybe it didn't fully understand the question, but are, are the, it thinks these are the weights, right? It put the weights as the minimum and maximum. Is right. What it did. So close. It should be zero to a hundred for percentage of that section. Correct. So I was impressed that it found the weights. Correct. But it didn't apply them in the right way. Also, you don't need to use at track there. Yeah, so I, I was, I, that's a good thing to point out, right? Like, I think, I don't know when the API got updated for that, but you don't need the track anymore. It's been um, a while. It's before my time, but I know it's been a while. Yeah, but just imagine how much old Salesforce LWC code it's read with track oh, in it. Yeah, I mean, tons. Uh, a lot. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, people be throwing track on stuff. Just oh, to they make still sure do it. That it works. Yeah. Um, this is solid. Doesn't it's work. Solid, but it doesn't do that. Doesn't work. But that's a this, really hard task. This, give it any specification. This surprised me. Just being able to say 
platform developer one and it starts pulling in stuff related to it it gets the categories it gets the that's categories. pretty mind-blowing but it doesn't it doesn't yeah. if you gave it more instructions i think it could do it. yeah i may be able to formulate the question a little bit better and yeah and and get it to work but this this one very impressive with some work with some formatting eh, it might be there it might be there the front end is correct the back end is a disaster and a half, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it would kill the JavaScript and screw the front end up. To be honest, yeah, that's very interesting. Um, but that's it. That's where we're gonna wrap up, at least for this video. Cool. Um, this was very interesting. Very interesting. Chase, any any thoughts as we as we wrap things up here? As somebody coming in fresh with this stuff, I'm impressed, but uh, I'm not fearing for my job. <laughs> I don't think this thing is going to make a, what did it say? 89,000 average. No one's going to start paying chat GPT 89 K to start <laughs> doing Salesforce development or any, any tech stack development with it. You could probably get it to do your computer science one-on-one homework. Yeah. Yeah. You can cheat with it. You can cheat yourself with it, but don't do that. So number one thing is, is it, what is it good at? It's good at kind of getting close to what you need. If you give it specific enough instructions mm -hmm. and I guess you kind of have to get lucky. What is it bad at? It's bad at architecture. It, I would never trust this thing to write architecture. It's bad at style. I, I don't like the way that it formats the code. I don't <laughs> like the way that it names its variables. I don't like any of that stuff. It's not clean. Uh, it is object oriented though. So that's a good thing, but it's also object oriented in a confusing way. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's got pros and cons. I just, I don't see myself hopping onto this when I get stuck on my next problem and asking it what it thinks. Yeah. Cause I feel like I am at its current state smarter than it in some ways, I, enough ways that it, I wouldn't yeah. waste time on this. I'd say probably Except for the scryfall thing. That was <laughs> kind of crack. It's uh, kind of terrifying. At, at least for, you, you know, huge disclaimer, right? We've, we've said it a couple of times. Don't just like, type out a question in here and stick the code into your org. Like this is once again, like a free research preview and all of that stuff. So it, it's not like this is built specifically for code. Like we're, we're supposed to, I'm pretty sure be asking this, like, why is the sky blue and all that to be more conversational with it. It just, yeah, it, on Mars. It, it just so happens that it also spits out code and we're very excited about that. Um, so yeah, just be very wary about it. Use it as a, a, a learning tool and something that, you know, if it piques your interest, uh, definitely check that out. Um, we'll probably be exploring this a little bit more. And I also want to potentially look at code ship. I'm saying code ship, co-pilot, co um, which is supposed to do something similar, right? It, it's like you give it potentially a prompt. What I've seen is you give it a prompt and it spits out code from, from, uh, GitHub repos and things like that, that are more, um, related to code versus this just like spitting out whatever I've never it's seen that either, but I, I have a buddy that uses it and, uh, yeah, unknown about that one, but Copilot, um, definitely something I want to check out. And maybe we'll wow. we'll take a look at this some more as we dive deeper into uh, how it works and a couple of other things. But Chase, man, thanks so much for joining me with this and being like my uh, my right hand man with this one, sounding board, whatever you want to call it. No, thank you for having me. I, I, I uh, <laughs> see somebody wanted see to your look mind's at it with me. your mind's blown. You're like I'm thinking. scared about the integration <laughs> one, dude. That one is the one that floored me. Yeah. Yeah, Make it, that into something. That's, it's pretty that's... slick. And, you know, if they continue to expand on this, I can see how it could be useful in, in some situations. So anyways, um, thank you all so much for watching. I'm Walters954. And remember, I believe in you. I believe in you, too.